now. We're coming to you live from New Egg Studios in Southern California. I'm Trisha Hirschberger. I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell. We're here every Thursday, 10 a.m. Pacific time. And if you're watching us live, thank you for being here too. Each week, we bring you a mix of tech news, hardware discussion. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we play some games. Uh, Sometimes. Smart money's on Trisha whenever we go head to head. And uh, we have <laughs> fantastic limited time deals on products you'll love over on newegg.com slash newegg now. Mm -hmm. Deals so good that they will expire at the end of the day today or while supplies last, so you better move fast. You can practically hear the clock ticking already. And as always, we want to hear from you guys. We'll be showing off some of your awesome PC builds later on in the show, but keep in mind that this show is live, so we can also talk to you and stuff. So share your tech questions, comments, and just let us know what you want us to talk about on yeah. Twitter using the hashtag NewEggNow, or you can drop us a line in the comments on YouTube or Facebook. We'll be checking in on some of those a little bit later in today's show, actually. Definitely. Uh, so let's jump in. Uh, today we're talking about hardware, and mm -hmm. we pretty much do that every episode yeah. where we talk about hardware, but <laughs> this week we're going to dive in real deep and talk about how some of the hardware we all love is actually created. Mm -hmm. and what happens to that hardware after you're done with it. So as we talk about these different components, how they're constructed, we'll also talk about some of the killer deals we have on those same types of components. Funny how that works out. Synergy. <laughs> uh, so you can see those deals live now on that newegg.com slash newegnow page. You don't need to wait for us to mention something if you want to jump on buying it. That's true. All right, let's start with the brains of our computers. Let's Definitely. go ahead and start with the good old central processing unit. <laughs> so whether you're talking AMD or Intel or mobile processors made by companies like Qualcomm, the manufacturing process is pretty much the same. We aren't going to go into every step of the process in great detail because that would take a very long time, but we certainly can cover the basics. Now, so first, a quick reminder on the fundamental basics of how these processors work. Uh, they function by using a series of transistors and gates that are printed on silicon with a special chemical process. So these mm -hmm. chips have billions of transistors that connect, and gates allow that transistor to be on or off, mm -hmm. binary, allowing the chip to process digital data in the form of binary code. Okay. And as you probably know, binary code is a series of ones and zeros. So there's a whole lot going on in a very tiny space. So the ability to reliably reproduce these very sophisticated chips is important. One thing that you'll find that's true throughout most of these manufacturing processes is the fact that dust and contaminants are the enemy number one. Something that's this small and complex needs to be perfectly clean to function properly. So the construction of these chips takes place in what's called a clean room. And it's called that for pretty obvious reasons, yeah. I would guess. <laughs> uh, when we say like clean room, we mean like really, really clean. Um, in Intel's clean rooms, for example, a cubic foot of air contains less than one particle of foreign material, measuring about 0.5 microns, a millionth of a meter across or less, and that is thousands of times cleaner than a hospital operating room. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I am not qualified to talk about hospital cleanliness. It's We'll save that for a different discussion, but uh, when we start talking about the fabrication of this material, we're talking about nanometers, microns. Mm -hmm. That's how small these things have to be to be uh, to be functional. There's a there's a great metaphor for CPUs in a book called The Three Body Problem, where they simulate pro binary processing with armies and flags. Ooh. You know, so like a flag up is a zero, and a flag down is a one, and things like that. And like to imagine the scale of millions and millions and millions of these things in in a little piece of wafer that sits in your hand is mind-bogglingly incredible. It is mind-boggling. So to keep things so insanely mind-bogglingly clean and contaminant-free, <laughs> purified air is constantly recirculated through these rooms, entering through the ceiling and exiting through the floor tiles. Technicians put on a special suit, commonly called a bunny suit, before they enter a clean room, and that's why high-tech manufacturing facilities, in those facilities, everybody looks like a surgeon. Yeah, you remember those old Intel yeah. commercials, right? You know, they would like show you like the labs and stuff. They even had like a Simpsons one for the Pentium too. I, why I don't remember these. Oh, I'm gonna yeah, go look great. them up after the show. Yeah, so I look look up the uh, the Pentium <laughs> two Simpsons commercial where Homer gets real smart because he gets an Intel Pentium two put in his head. It's pretty great. That's but how life works. Yeah. Those, those we've seen those suits a lot in there. So making a CPU <laughs> is a very complex process requiring hundreds of precisely controlled steps that result in pattern layers of various materials built one on top of another. So I actually, I'm going to throw, I've got some CPU photos here, and I'm going to switch over, and uh, we can talk about... Yeah, let's talk about, let's show some of these CPUs while we're talking. Um, all right. There we go. 
Perfect. So look how beautiful these are. Um, and I'll kind of talk through the process while we're looking at these. So it all starts with sand. Sand <laughs> has a high percentage of silicon, which is a semiconductor, meaning it's perfect for transferring the signals a chip uses, uh, provided the silicon is close to pure. The first step is to melt the silicon and purify it into a solid crystal lattice cylinder called an ingot. Uh, the ingot is then sliced into individual discs called wafers. Each wafer is about one millimeter thick. Now the next step is to apply a light sensitive etch resistant material called photoresist onto the water surface. A chemical process then removes the soluble photoresist. And then after that, ions, which positively or negatively charged atoms, uh, ions are embedded beneath the surface of the water in regions not covered by the photoresist. So, I mean, pretty simple, right? You got all that? There's going to be a quiz on this after after we're done with this episode. <laughs> so, uh, next up is a <laughs> hugely complicated process of mm -hmm. etching and applying layers of material like silicon dioxide and copper to create the finished transistor. Mm -hmm. And you can think of it as an elaborate stenciling process mm. using copper instead of stencils and pencils, but this requires cutting edge machinery yeah. and very precise chemical application. So you probably won't be pulling this off in your garage. Oh man. I, in fact, I would say just don't try that at home. No, no. I just want to see that person <laughs> with this little microscope like trying yeah, to, no, it probably don't won't do it. happen for you very and I'm sorry. Very expensive and sad. Uh, <laughs> and, and so definitely this is not something just anybody can do, which is why there are so few companies that make CPUs. Yeah, so after the final uh, water processing step is complete, mm -hmm. the excess copper is sanded off, the chip is more or less recognizable as the CPUs that we, we know, especially from the photos that the Newegg team took for those CPUs. That's essentially what we're getting to. Yeah, and then next up comes the precise testing procedure called binning. Mm -hmm. You'll see that word a lot when you talk about manufacturing. It's essentially a test that puts the component through a strenuous process, and that allows the manufacturer to know how to label it. So it's a bit like component benchmarking, if you will. And then, uh, let's see, last up is packaging and shipping and uh, shipping it off to retailers like Newegg. Yeah. And then finally, you can buy it and put it in your build. So that was a lot. <laughs> on CPUs. A lot of conversation there. So uh, <laughs> CPUs are some of the most complex and sophisticated machines mm -hmm. on the planet. So creating them is understandably a really complicated process. It, true, but a CPU is not much good without a motherboard. True so let's story. talk about how the nervous system of your build is put together. Then we'll get to get some great CPU and motherboard deals. We actually have some really good ones this week. Sorry, something just floated now. right in front of my face. Um, so obviously, uh, we don't we don't shoot this in a clean room. That, no, that, that doesn't unfortunately happen. Unfortunately not. So uh, in <laughs> Southern California, very dusty Not a clean room. Not a clean Southern room. California. Not at all. So <laughs> obviously the motherboard <laughs> is important. Sorry, it just totally distracted. Like I reached up and grabbed it without even thinking about it. Squirrel. Squirrel, uh, because it, the motherboard is what ties everything in your build together. You know this, we know this, but it's important to kind of talk about how all these pieces and parts fit together. So this yeah. is much more complicated than a place for your CPU to sit covered with a bunch of transistors. Like everything else we'll be discussing requires a huge amount of pre-production, design, enormous factories to create a motherboard. Mm -hmm. And so uh, again, we've got some great motherboard shots here. Let me uh, let me switch over Ooh, to this tab pictures here. Pictures are fun. And, and this is all taken by the new Egg Ninjas here. Uh, they, they work magic what with the cameras and the uh, the hardware components. So if we want to throw to that, uh, yeah, there we go. Cool. So like CPUs, you have to start with the basic building blocks. In this case, fiberglass, which provides insulation, and copper, which forms the conductive pathways that allow your board to communicate with everything that it needs to. So the first step is taking a sheet of fiberglass and adding a thin copper foil to both sides, resulting in a copper clad laminate. Uh, next, a photoresist laminate is applied to the board, and then after that, the pattern of the printed circuit board's components is placed over that laminate and exposed to ultraviolet light and a chemical bath to solidify the pattern. The copper that isn't needed is then etched away, leaving only the tracks that are required. Now, depending on how many layers the motherboard needs, this process will be repeated several times. And after that, the holes are drilled. <laughs> I got the easy part of that one. Yeah. Um, another thin layer of copper is applied, and finally the board is electroplated with tin. So to complete the mm -hmm. printed circuit board, also called the PCB, mm -hmm. a solder mask and the component identification is silk screened on the board. It's then tested. And finally, the surface mounting components, SMCs, are soldered on. 
Uh, then the final testing takes place where every connection is thoroughly tested and finally the completed board is packaged and sold. Again, it's a pretty elaborate process and we haven't even gotten to storage <laughs> yet. Uh, pretty amazing how much work goes into making just one single motherboard. Uh, and and uh, Trisha, mm -hmm. speaking of motherboards, because we were just talking about them. Okay, yes. Uh, we promised you some deals, so we did. let's talk some deals. First up, CPUs. We've got an mm -hmm. Intel Core i5 8600 Copy Lake 6 Core CPU mm -hmm. on sale right now for $40 off. Yes, we do. Or if you're more of a Ryzen fan, we also have the Cutting Edge AMD Ryzen Threadripper Thread 1950X Ripper. CPU for a pretty serious $180 off. If you're looking to do a Threadripper build, now <sighs> is the perfect time. Yep. Um, might be pulling the trigger on that today. Yeah, so, do it. And if you're looking for a motherboard for that beastly chip, check out mm -hmm. the Asus ROG Zenith Extreme X399 that we have for $30 off. Again, everything and pulling the trigger on a Threadripper build. There's really no reason to wait. It's like you're talking to yourself. I am probably going to be selling myself some more components throughout the course of the show today. <laughs> yep. Uh, we also have the very lovely Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Gaming 3 Intel board discounted for $35 off along with a $15 mail-in rebate. Now, this is a perfect match for that 8th gen Intel CPU we have discounted. Mm hmm So uh, make sure to check out the Newegg Now deals page for more. Yeah, there's always deals there that we don't get a chance to talk about on the show. So totally. newegg.com slash Newegg Now. You want to be checking that out. Yes. All the deals. All right. Next up, we're going to talk a bit about storage, starting with hard drives. Now, as you probably know, these older style drives are made from actual spinning metal disks, which is why they are heavier than SSDs. Mm -hmm. The platters of a hard drive are typically made using aluminum or glass and ceramic. And as of 2015, laptop hard drive platters are made from glass, while aluminum platters are often found in desktop computers. Those disks are coated with various metallic, mostly non-magnetic alloys as underlayers designed to help store data. Did not know that about laptop drives being made out of glass. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. hmm. So these have to be extremely smooth and durable to operate properly. Sure. These disks are then housed in a case with some kind of reading mechanism, mm -hmm. not unlike a record player arm, if you want to use that as a loose and clumsy metaphor. That's how I always picture That's how it. That's like, yeah. again, that it's yeah. but going like super fast. <laughs> and you have yourself a spinning disk drive. Yeah. So that's a quick refresh on how the old school hard drives mm -hmm. operate. But what about the SSDs? So um, why don't you, I'm going to just say, why don't you explain it to us? And I'm going to go back to you do photos? showing the photos again. I like right. it. Photo that, man. That, that'll probably work better than me trying to talk and do the laptop. No, and the that's okay. At the same you time. have a co-host. I'm here for you. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and talk about some SSDs. A solid state drive is a storage device that uses integrated circuit assemblies as memory to store data. Basically, instead of using spinning metal disks to, to store data, it uses circuit assemblies, so there's no moving parts. This usually mm -hmm. means that they are faster, but also don't always last as long. So the SSD manufacturing process isn't actually that different from any other printed circuit board, like a motherboard. Mm -hmm. The same process of creating the pathways like on a CPU combined with the construction of the PCB and then the use of pick and place machines to mount the flash memory and any other components. As part of Newegg Now today, we have some great deals on storage, both traditional hard drives and SSDs. If you're looking for solid state, check out the A Data Unlimited SU650 SSD, which is 128 gigabytes for super cheap. It's perfect for installing an OS. And if you're looking for something bigger, uh, we've definitely got you covered there too. You can check out the Western Digital Gold 6 terabyte hard drive, which is also discounted, and I will be buying today because I'm out of uh, video backup space for my future projects. You're buying a lot today, man. <laughs> it's gonna hurt. So uh, pick them both up for fast load times and plenty of storage. Uh, and then this brings us to RAM. Um, do it. you have some RAM photos you can show? Oh, I got please? those RAM photos. Perfect. That the Let's new, do it, Juan. What the new egg ninjas shot for us on on the RAMs? Okay. Uh, so RAM is interesting because, like CPUs, it needs to be constructed in an extremely clean environment to avoid impurities. The memory must be attached to either a printed circuit board stick 
or the main board of the product it will ship in. Uh, that PCB must also be produced in a clean environment by an extremely precise machine that again takes training to properly operate as just one mistake could destroy an entire batch of chips. Mm -hmm. As you can imagine, <laughs> creating these complex components requires quite a bit of money and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Not only are the materials expensive, much of the process is automated by extraordinarily precise machines in heavily regulated facilities. Yeah, you can't just jump into CPU or RAM production because it requires so much overhead. That means when the manufacturing process does get messed up, it can seriously affect prices. True story. For example, when the SK Hynix factory caught on fire in China a few years ago, it made the average price of a DDR3 chip jump over 40% in just a matter of weeks. Yeah. There just aren't that many places in the world capable of producing some of these high-tech electronics. No, well, fortunately, we have some great RAM here right now yeah. at great prices. Not 40% uh, not higher. Not, uh, for, but, no, no. Lower. That's what you want. <laughs> With the promo code you'll find on Newegg.com slash Newegg now, you can pick up 8 gigabytes of Guile Evo Potenza RAM for $17 off. Ooh. And lastly, let's talk real quick about how GPUs are made. Okay. So while I, I'll bring up the photo. You do the, the thing. Let's what, do it. With the speech. We're getting good at this. The, yeah, I, I think we've got a system here. I like it. Okay. So. <laughs> Got okay. it queued up if we you wanted to throw out of that. Uh, awesome. So it's actually really similar to the process of creating a CPU in that it's also a chip, though this one is placed in a much larger PCB. So you might be looking at a GPU and thinking, what? That thing is like 50 times bigger than my CPU. How are they the same thing? That's because all of the fans and shrouds and everything are designed to keep the tiny little GPU chip itself from overheating. Also because looking awesome makes every chip run faster. That's PC <laughs> building 101. I mean, yeah, you put, you put some speed holes in there and paint some flames on it. Well, totally. no, not flames. You wouldn't want flames. No, on, I would maybe on a ice build. cubes, igloos, yeah, I don't know. We'll uh, like a CPU, the process of creating a GPU involves applying a patterned mask to the surface of the silicon wafer so that the chemical processes only affect those areas with gaps in the mask. So we actually have a quick video um, from ASUS about how their right. GPUs are created via automation. Uh, you'll see a lot of what we've been talking about in action, so why don't we throw to that? Let's go ahead and check that out. For PC components, a well-designed printed circuit board, or PCB, is the critical foundation for product reliability on which advanced components are installed. Until today, Every graphics card in the world was hand-built to exact specifications. Now, incorporating 180 innovations, Asus is the first graphics card brand to achieve 100% automated production, accompanied by aerospace-grade Super Alloy Power 2 component materials and advanced quality control and inspection to deliver superior quality and reliability as premium workstation products. Product quality is always at the forefront of our minds. With the principle of design thinking, we are persistently finding ways to optimize every minute detail of components, circuit boards, and production process. This is the spirit of ASUS Auto Extreme technology. ASUS Auto Extreme technology creates and refines a new generation of exclusive super alloy power components to ensure its voltage threshold and power efficiency even in the toughest conditions. Furthermore, ASUS Auto Extreme technology optimizes the production process by eliminating an entire stage of heating, fortifying the component's overclocking stability even further. To achieve even better product longevity, we completely removed the use of plugs to minimize dust buildup and oxidation on the circuit boards and connectors. Setting the highest standard of quality control in the industry ASUS Auto Extreme technology customizes inspection systems to ensure Super Alloy Power 2 components are produced and installed with the highest precision and consistent perfection. Beyond reliability, we are committed to environmentally friendly production by avoiding harsh chemicals and reducing electricity consumption by 50%. Another benefit of ASUS Auto Extreme technology is that it makes the circuit boards totally smooth for the first time system builders can enjoy working without sharp bumps. ASUS Auto Extreme technology leads us a step further on our quest to produce perfect graphics cards. Now more than ever, you can be assured that ASUS graphics cards represent the pinnacle of product performance, quality, and reliability.
So that's an overview of how some of our favorite products are made. Obviously, there's a lot more to it than we can get into on today's show, but hopefully you learned a little something. Yeah. Uh, of course, after all of these components are put together inside of a laptop or phone, there's still plenty more testing that needs to be done. So a lot of people don't think about how elaborate that testing process is for electronics like PC components, laptops, and phones. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's entire warehouses designed just to stress test products and make sure that they're up to rigorous. Standards. Have you ever done a factory tour? I have not. Have you? Oh, yes. So I, I got to do one with, um, with Oppo. Cool. And so you go to this whole floor where it's nothing but machine after machine after machine, where it's like little rubber pokers that are just simulating screen presses, like thousands and thousands of screen what? presses. They even did one where it was a cloth flex. So like like what would happen yeah. to your phone when you sit down yeah. and it's in your pocket and they're trying to simulate trying stress. to avoid bend gate exactly you know I get it I get really it. cool stuff and, and just like the insane number of devices that just get like wrecked like we're gonna keep dropping this phone over and over and over again it's it's hilarious. to me that That's sounds awesome. so fun like just the idea of imagining an entire test facility dedicated to drop tests and stuff is so cool oh yeah I love it. It, it's awesome and, it, like, and again it's not something that everyone's just gonna have the opportunity to do but there are some really great videos online I did one in 360 so you can yeah. look all around oh, nice. the facility and stuff uh, you know, like if you want to check out my channel you know, you know and I think we're actually stuff, about to show a video of what that looks have a like, much right? better video that's gonna give you <laughs> than what I can shoot on my own um, again our friends at ASUS sent us another great video that shows one of their laptop testing facilities again you can see how crazy it is and 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 what they go through to um, to, to actually fix and not not fix, but what they have to go to through destroy. to destroy, yeah, and <laughs> really? to make sure that your stuff is going to be you know sort of lifestyle, uh, uh, life proof, life proof, there you or go. life resistant, I should say. Like okay. you, this stuff's not sure. really like waterproof, but resistant. it's legal <laughs> resistant. Legal jargon, I get it. All right, let's check out that video. Um, so yeah, do we do we have that on? Can we throw it around? It's like teacher has a hangover. We're showing so many videos today. No. Gotta credit Wes for that one. Thank you, it's Wes. Like, not, not, not from drinking. I was up way too late last night playing Exiled Kingdoms. I get it. And I, I apologize. Yeah. No, so that, that kind of stuff I love, though. Um, I love getting a little behind the scenes because we sort of take some of this stuff for granted. And we're yeah. like, oh, yeah, you just go buy a laptop. You go buy a phone. It's, you know, whatever. It's fine. Right. Without really fully understanding until you see the economy of scale of testing those products and you think about what goes into some of this stuff when it's in your pocket or in your backpack you want to make sure that it's safe and that it's going to do okay that there are facilities like that for everything that we do basically anything with advanced electronics and it gets some degree of testing like that it's mind-blowing to think about that infrastructure. Mind-blowing. Hopefully not Jeep blowing up. Or testing. Yes. Or <laughs> battery exploding. Yep. 
Uh, speaking of mind blowing though, did you know that 20 to 50 million metric tons of e-waste are mm. thrown away worldwide every year? We're gonna kind of shift gears right now, guys, and yeah. talk about, we talked about how it was made. Let's talk about the other End side. Um, and in America alone, people throw away phones containing over $60 million in gold and silver every year. It's so bad, that's terrible. It raises Ugh. the question, what happens to my old electronics when I'm done with them? And this is definitely a part of a conversation that I think all of us who are tech enthusiasts should be sharing with our family and friends. 100% yes. So again, we talked about how these products are created and tested, but then what? What happens to all the valuable minerals that we lose when we just throw away something like a motherboard or a hard drive? Yeah, so there are all sorts of chemicals used in manufacturing this stuff. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's really hard to pronounce elements. Yttrium. <laughs> We, 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 I had to write that out phonetically mm -hmm. in the script that we have up right there. Yttrium is an element used in the production of some LEDs, can, okay. can be refined into a superconducting material. And then there's also terbium, which is critical for making solid state drives. You know, again, it sounds like a villain from a Marvel franchise, <laughs> but there are plenty more commonly known precious metals used in making this hardware as well. Absolutely. Um, gold, silver, copper, and platinum are present in pretty much any computer or electronic device in your home. Yeah. It's usually not a lot of material per device, but just take into account how many devices are out there today and how many we all have in our homes. Yeah. That adds up to a lot of metal, which obviously is not a renewable resource. No, and when outdated or broken technology ends up in a landfill, mm -hmm. that takes those materials out of circulation. Not to mention it's toxic for that environment mm -hmm. and that's a real shame because pretty much all of that stuff is to some degree recyclable. Uh, luckily, e-waste recycling has taken off in a pretty big way. Urban mining, which yeah. refers to the collection and refinement of e-waste, has become more profitable than actually pulling raw materials out of the ground, and it's certainly easier to get to. Yeah, well, I mean, because like you see photos of it too, you're like I'm glad we're, we're starting to get there now as opposed to you know, like fallout uh -huh. Yeah, you know, like we, those images of like, you know, yep. dystopian societies of us having to mine through landfills, we're doing it now. It's pretty incredible. So um, after all your old and broken motherboards, monitors, printers are collected, they're taken to a facility to be rendered down into base materials. They're broken down by a series of chemical baths and put through furnaces and electron uh, electrolysis processes. The important thing is that an incredible amount of this material can be reclaimed. We actually have one more video <laughs> that demonstrates this process, but this one is from Sims Recycling Solutions, also known as SRS Technology Group on Newegg. So let's take a look at that and hopefully learn a little about what happens to our dead gadgets. Electronics recycling can be challenging because discarded electronic products are complex devices manufactured from varying proportions of glass, metals, and plastics. These materials then need to be processed and separated into clean commodity streams that can be used to make new products. Resourceful production teams, trained technicians, and systematic and secure processing allow SIMS Recycling Solutions to provide our customers with closed loop recycling services. This enables you to ensure environmentally responsible processing of your retired electronics while minimizing the risks involved with handling sensitive digital data. Efficient separation of materials is the foundation of electronics recycling. Initial shredding of equipment facilitates sorting and separation of plastics from metals and internal circuitry. As a conveyor belt transports shredded material, a powerful overhead magnet separates iron and steel from the waste stream. This separated ferrous material is collected in Gaylords and prepared for sale as recycled steel. Further mechanical processing separates aluminum, copper, and circuit boards from the material stream, which now is mostly plastic. Visual inspection and hand sorting improves the quality of the extracted materials. The separated streams of aluminum, copper, and circuit boards are collected in Gaylords and prepared for sale as recycled commodity materials. Using advanced separation technology, ABS plastic is separated from polystyrene plastic. This important separation step improves reuse potential in manufacturing next-generation products. 
few recyclers invest in this innovative technology. The final step in the separation process locates and extracts any remaining metal remnants from the plastics to create as pure a stream as possible. This results in more efficient reuse of recycled materials. SIMS is uniquely positioned to meet the challenges of the electronics recycling industry. We are SIMS Recycling Solutions. It's a little like the end of Toy Story 3 for technology. Oh, no! You know, like, <laughs> but no, it makes me so happy to see this industry like thriving because yeah, like it. there's there's nothing worse than the idea. I, I don't know, because you're probably like me. You have your junk drawer full of like old gadgets old, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I keep them forever. I actually, I, I use them as background in my tech videos on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Totally, but yeah, like I, I mean, like I work really hard to make sure that it's not just like chucked in a in a garbage can. Totally, you know, it's not just thrown away. Yeah. But then, for for this aspect of it, you know, reclaiming this stuff out of landfills that we're seeing an industry build up around that too is is really heartening. You know, it is. It's really and it's really cool to see how that happens. But there oh, yeah. are other things that people can do with older computer hardware without becoming an urban miner yourself, and, and not just making them set dressing for your YouTube vlogs. Well, oh like, yes. Like or I that, did. yes. Yeah. Uh, there are a number of awesome <laughs> organizations out there that will gladly take your outdated but functional equipment, refurbish it, and then donate it to charities or schools or other nonprofits. Yeah. Um, the refurbishing process can breathe new life into old tech, and there are plenty of organizations that can help your old tech find a good home. Oh, definitely, and especially mm -hmm. because we probably invest in tech at the higher end of the market, which means it ages a lot more gracefully than just your normal gut rot low end system. So mm -hmm. there, there are, you know, the, even if it's not up to our standards for what we want to do with it, passing it along, people would still get a lot of use out of my our old stuff. My parents almost always get my hand-me-down phones. Almost always. Yep. And they think they're amazing. <laughs> right. They yeah. are cutting edge tech like, for my Oh, my God, it's taking too long to load my, uh, okay, but yeah. Uh, it, uh, even outside of donating, gifting, re-gifting, yeah. you can also repurpose your device yourself. Mm -hmm. Even if you get a new computer, chances are there's plenty of hardware you can reuse. An old uh, solid state drive can become another storage drive on your new system. I have a drive That's dedicated true. just to rendering. Great. So like I, I have one drive that just stays clean, just try and keep that process as fast awesome. as possible. Awesome. Um, you can also, uh, an old PC can be hooked up to your living room TV. You can create a media center experience. Uh, uh, off of the old parts that you're not using in your main build anymore. Yep, absolutely. I actually just did a video recently uh, for Kingston Technology where we were talking about old Android devices and all the different things you can do with them from so much turning fun. them into uh, a baby monitor or, you know, there's a million different things. Uh, really, really fun to think about the different ways you can use old tech. Totally. Uh, but then if you really do just want to get rid of your old hardware, definitely consider recycling. Throwing it in the landfill isn't just bad for the environment, it's also a waste of precious resources. Yeah. So check your local facilities to find a place where you can get rid of e-waste like monitors, phones, or old computer components. Yeah, I, I know there can be a little psychological barrier to doing some of that legwork, like where am mm -hmm. I gonna take this thing, is it gonna cost me? I know it takes right. a little bit of time, but it's totally worth that little bit of effort to be a good tech citizen. A recent study showed that mm -hmm. producing a computer One. along with its monitor takes around 1.5 tons of water, 48 pounds of chemicals, and 530 pounds of fossil fuels. Almost every part of a computer can be recycled. So keep that in mind, and also spread that word along to your family and friends. We can all be better tech citizens. Agreed. Uh, one last thing to consider when thinking of recycling hardware, security, <laughs> especially yes. when it comes to storage. Yeah. If you're going to give away a storage device, you need to be incredibly careful about what happens to that data. Yeah. Always, always format a drive before giving it away. And if you're super serious, there are applications like DBAN that will overwrite your drive with so much data that it's basically impossible to recover anything. Yeah, or, or like I love some of the stories you hear from like corporate things too. Like we basically built a rail gun that just <laughs> smashes the hard drive and just shoots it down a chute. You know, like you gotta protect that data, man. I have like crazy old hard drives that probably aren't even functional anymore, but yep. I'm I'm very but you're nervous too about to get rid of giving them, them away. Yeah. yeah. So a good example of the importance of this kind of security popped up a few years ago in a CBS News investigation. Mm -hmm. Reporters purchased used copy machines. 
some of which had previously been used in police stations and hospitals. Oh. Hospitals. Most digital copy machines actually have hard drives inside them mm. that store images of the documents they copy. Because reasons. And the hard drives inside these used machines had not been wiped properly before they were resold. The reporters who purchased the machines were able to extract hundreds of extremely sensitive documents relatively <laughs> easily, probably using you know, free software that you can download uh, from the internet. Crime reports, medical records, that kind of stuff terrifies me. That's, yeah. that's really frightening to think about. Agreed. Um, it, so it's great to recycle and reuse storage devices, just make absolutely sure you've wiped them first. Yes. Uh, honestly, you cannot be too careful. No, I, mm -hmm. I, like, I, I think a lot of people out there would probably share their sentiment. Like, if I'm gonna gift you my old PC, mm -hmm. I will spring for a new hard drive. Yes. To put in it. There you go. Like, That's a great it, idea. It might not might, it might be the best, but like, I, I'm, I'm super paranoid about what I put on phones and laptops and mm -hmm. desktops and stuff. So uh, that's it for our look at manufacturing and recycling. Uh, we should probably check out what you guys have been up to. One of our yes. favorite parts of the show is checking out your PC builds, your mm -hmm. gaming builds, your hardware, especially of late, the, the lighting that you guys come up with. I know. I'm super jealous of I, what you guys have been doing. I have not been getting in on that ambient lighting I really thing, need to step up my game. To. I just have like twinkly Christmas lights behind me in my videos. I need, I need the proper like ambient desk set up. So uh, you can send these in via Twitter or Facebook with the Newegg Now hashtag, yes. at Newegg on, on uh, the Twitters. I'm going to pull this up right now. We actually had this Facebook post. So we were talking about some Ryzen deals, uh, Ryzen mm -hmm. 7 CPUs, and it's kicked off a whole conversation of people sharing <gasps> some of their hardware. Look at that. Nick Santiago, this is a flipping gorgeous build, white and blue. All open. Open case. I really love that setup. The piping is on yep. point, and I love the air coolers on that. I, I just, I, I love that too, because I love the, the idea of it being sort of like a test bed. It's really nice. Kind of Weren't you thinking about going blue for your build? I still haven't made up my mind. Because okay. if, if I go blue, I want it to be like white on blue. But if it's it. green, then I want it to be black on green. Got it. I do like black and green still. Um, I want to. Oh, yeah, that's gorgeous. I think, did I just You're, lose it? Yeah, I want to scroll up. back down here. here we go. This is from Micah Mercer. Really clean, simple desktop uh, setup here. I like, I, I like a very, uh, I, I like the drawings up on top above the monitor. Um, so Modded really, for better really airflow, clean. nice. But look at how clean that dual case fan is in the front. Yeah. Again, I like simple, some really clean lighting accents. Just really, really well done there, Micah. <laughs> really well done. Um, another, so black and blue. So we want to go dark from Nick Henderson. Okay. This is an R5, 1600. Uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, Strix GTX 1080. And again, you know, like I love it when the you know, it's lit, just high contrast, just these lights uh, coming from inside the case, and it looks kind of Blade runner -y. <laughs> I just like the look of that. Like I want to kick off all the lights in my office and have a PC I can look at too. Dun, dun, dun. Really, really clean. Um, and then we had from Daniel. Wanted to get this one. A little outdoor build action. Yeah. 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 Upgrading the PC with the nephew. Upgrading my nephew's PC. Look at that. I love it. I like, I like it when tech becomes a family affair. And it really it's can really now. I mean, it's so much more accessible than it used to be. Oh, totally. I, I mean, I'll still, like, I'll have to tell my daughter all the war stories of, like, oh, when me and my dad worked on the family PC, it was because well, we had, Well, Lex like, isn't old stuff. enough to help you with Franken build, right? Oh, no, no, not yet. Nah, two and a half. That's, that, actually, that would be a lot of fun. It would make for a very entertaining YouTube video. video. Not the most functional build. This is from Jeff Kintz. Simple, no frills, only my second build. I built it for my mother. Simple and elegant. Jeff, good man. Look you build that. it for Mother's Day? Because that would be a kick-ass Mother's Day gift. I, I mean, I, now I need to like step up my mom's build too while I'm working on yeah. Franken build. Ah, I love it. And uh, let's see, do we have a couple more you want to show off? Yeah, I do want to get to this one just because this Ooh. is some crazy lighting. So, uh, yeah, again, this, the, that triple fan case right up front. Uh, this is an Asus Crosshair Hero 6. The entire RGB kit. Yeah. Mouse pad, keyboard, the front face fans lighting up. I can't Yeah, what is that back there? Is that, that a capture is, card? What he's got. Let me see if I can get in there. No, I, that's about as much as I can zoom in. But it's a Corsair something. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe maybe a headphone stand. I can't tell, but I love that even that's um, all lit up yeah, and arranged with the put rest of the really build. Nice. Good rainbow effects right there. Um, and then we had this one, which has got some video action. Oh, I, can I can I make that bigger? 
So, ooh, look at that. Showing off some RGB action on the video. Again, really clean, guys. Some really pretty stuff. Again, thank you guys for sending these in. This is honestly uh, Wad and I's favorite part of the show each week, is checking out what you guys have been up to and getting inspired by everybody else's builds and creativity. So yeah, thank totally. you, thank you, thank you for sending these in. Just drooling about how much I have to step my own game up to. How, how I know. I actually saw uh, a question in chat. Juan, what are you going to do you? with Frank and build once you finally build a new PC? Oh, man. So... Um, uh, I, I will I will be thinking about that a lot because a lot of that will probably get recycled you know okay. so so like the hard drives that I've got right now that's gonna go in I've got a ton of RAM in that build I'm probably just gonna move that over mm -hmm. I, I'm not entirely sure it's a it's an Intel 5820k and a GTX 970 and you know that's long in the tooth for me trying to cut 4k video for web distribution yes. but that's still monster hardware for someone who wants like, a good mid-ranger computing solution can do some some decent gaming on it. Um, I, I, I like I definitely want to find a good home for it, but it won't be a full system, like because I'll be pulling a lot of parts out of it for my own stuff. Right, of course. Well, and you have a few systems that you run off of, right? I, I've been shutting them down. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So I used to have like five different towers. Trying to have one system to rule them all. Forward. So I, I want to get to yes. like a good desktop situation and then move a lot of more a lot more of that other stuff over to laptops. Our living room computer. Is a, is a Razer gaming laptop. And that's what we've been playing Beat Saber in on oh, in the so living room. I'm so jealous you've been playing Beat Saber in oh, your living room. Oh, it's so good. I actually, I, I can talk about my bowling injury and now my VR injury. <laughs> this shoulder's been getting a little creaky. Um, and I have to like shake it up because I plant and then whip around too too tight. You're already too good at that game. I'm gonna have to step up my practice at home. Otherwise, you're just gonna school me. Um, okay, so good let's time. go ahead and check back in on that new egg now deals page, and we will oh, yeah. beat Saber head to head another time. Um, <laughs> don't forget about our excellent Ryzen Threadripper discount, along with an excellent ASUS board that we highlighted earlier in today's show. Yeah, and we also have a great deal on an MSI GTX 1060 mm -hmm. GPU. You can currently currently get for eighty dollars off with a mail-in discount. Mm -hmm. We also have a Zotac GeForce GTX 1070 Ti available for $40 off. That's a great GPU deal right there. Yep, and we've got a few cases for sale, like the Deep Cool Gamer Storm New Arc, which has some pretty sophisticated integrated cooling, which is discounted $80 with a mail-in rebate. We also have the Corsair Tempered Glass Crystal Series, which yeah. we have right over here behind one with all the pretty lights on it. And that is $40 off Seeing right now. Seeing that case showing up in a lot of builds, it's been a popular case from Corsair there. Yep. So we also have a great CPU cooler on sale, the entry lever entry level master liquid light 120 from cooler master and if you're looking for our power supply we have a few to choose from like the corsair vs series the vs 550 or the high-end seasonic prime 1300 watt psu for 50 dollars off with the mail-in rebate and if you're looking for gaming laptops uh, so that you can play Beat Saber in your living room, we have That's some so great offers for you right now, like the MSI GL63 with an i5-8300 and a GTX 1050 for $60 off. Or if you're more of an ASUS fan, mm -hmm. check out the ASUS GL703 with a 7700HQM and a GTX 1060. And we also have a serious discount in high end uh, in a high end LG 4K IPS mm -hmm. display, an AOC gaming monitor, some killer Arado Apollo 7 headphones, yeah. and much much more. Make sure you check out the new Egg Now page before it's all gone. Okay, so to wrap up the show today, we're taking a dive into our indie game vaults and going all the way back to the distant past that is 2015 and playing an underappreciated gem called Mushroom 11. Let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer.
even seen this game before. Um, but New Egg Ninja Nick saw it, I believe, yeah. at a PAX years ago and said that it kind of always stuck with him and he didn't feel like it got the coverage that it deserved, but that it's really, really fun and satisfying to play. Juan was playing it a little bit before the show today. Yeah, so I mean, this isn't this isn't necessarily the best game to go like do a head to head. Um, so I think we should try and go checkpoint to checkpoint. Yeah. Um, Why don't you show me how then, it's done since you've played it before and I have barely seen anything so more than I, the trailer? So actually, I'm, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the audience one better. I'm gonna put I'm gonna oh, put, no. put, put, put the wheel in your hands and then talk you through because I had to have Nick tell me what was going on. Okay. I was, full new I was, blind playthrough here. I was guys. being like super dainty, which I don't think I'm gonna I'm not worried about you. I, I was being like being dainty? like su super like delicate. So basically you have this blob and you and have you this thing it. that pushes the blob around and then as parts of the blob start kind of splitting off as you eliminate oh, I get others. I want to the blob in this like elevator. And then up and around other obstacles oh, and stuff. I see. Okay, and no, so as you way. eliminate parts this of way. the smaller No, I killed my blob. friend. No, that's good. That's good because oh. then it, it causes the bigger part no, of the blob. No, no, no. Get it, get it, get it. I got it. Yes. Excellent. So it comes back. Yeah, and it, like Nick, uh, New Egg Ninja Nick was saying, it's actually really hard to uh, to like kill your blob, um, but it, it, you wanna oh, you wanna I try and to... guide it and push it around. So you see, you've got like the little trigger. Now go 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 with that guy. Oh no! You no, I killed him. him. Okay, so Stinker pull parts. that back up. Um, sorry, then... I'm trying to make my language better. See, and see, so when you when you eliminate the the back blob, your your main blob there grows oh, bigger. Oh, I see. So now come oh. back and now kill some of him. Now go back. Oh, this is so bizarre. Isn't Can I it? push him now? But doesn't it Great. feel, like, as you start to get a feel for it, like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I know we were talking that speedrunners have done some really interesting things with this game. Which way? Do I go right or left? Did I go the wrong way? The other mouse click is actually a finer point. Oh, yeah. Oh, and so there's a right click where if you need to do something, like, a little bit more sculpty, but... It's this guy. Can he hurt oh, me? No. Oh, he can? You just said, oh, no. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just kind of wanted to make you nervous. Is he a friend? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh. Sir, up okay. this way. Go that way. Go that way. Well, Skip. I'm real glad that we can't die in this game to. because I, think, I don't know what I'm doing. I think you, you can. Think you can. But that it's, that it's, there we go. it's hard to get to, like, final real death. I'm going Let's, down. Oh, this. no, that's a checkpoint. That's a oh, checkpoint that's up a check in the corner. Point. Just kidding. Checkpoint in the corner. That Stay lovely on target. little Stay on target. Uh, beautiful plant. Okay, so go, eliminate go, all that. Go, go, They'll go, get bigger. go, go, get that checkpoint. Yes. Got a flower feeling good. Go down the hole. So, I mean, this is sort of like a recycling, <laughs> reusing kind of game. So, is that how we're saying it goes on today's game? I, you know, I just, like, I think it, it, almost, it almost works. I just went down here for nothing. What is it? I ate it. I don't know. You just got 12 DNA ribbon point things. So I don't know what that means. Where are those? Or did you just make that up? No, no, no. Like a little thing popped down in the corner of the screen. Oh. So, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're focused on the task at hand. I, I will look at some of the other uh, Are you shout information for me? that's Thank coming you. out. I appreciate that. Oh, oh. Okay. Uh, you know, get, push that over. Get and then when you eliminate the way. stuff behind Please it, get, go. Because he's tipping, that way. tipping, Please tipping. Please go. Thank you. Oh, that, that was way. close. I was, I was really Oh, afraid. no. Elevators. No. Get rid of that. No, stay. Get it, get on it, there. get it, get it. Oh. Good, 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 good. Okay. Now it's all about the balance. It's all about the balance. Okay. okay. That's a really pretty shape. That's there kind of like Loch Ness right there. Here we go. Now I could totally see myself getting overly distracted by like there the shapes go. that I was making. Oh, a checkpoint. Another checkpoint. Oh, thank goodness. So already you're two checkpoints ahead of Newegg Ninja Leo. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think oh, I probably want to get in this hole. Because I think he's... Do I want to get in that hole? I, I don't know if I want to get in that hole. I, you're I'm falling. I'm not really sure you're what's supposed it. to happen. Ah, it's a blind ball. fall and oh, into the lava. lava. Sure, well, that's how you die in this game. We have figured it out. <laughs> Good job, me. All right, Juan, take over from right. that last checkpoint and show me Let's what see. I'm supposed to do. Now, I didn't use the keyboard at all. Am I supposed to be using the keyboard? No, I don't think so. Okay, I you're just, just moving it for fun. I, well, I did, you know, I just, I was getting, letting you take the wheel, you know, <laughs> so I was going to make sure. So I think this is going to fall on the lava. I'm being way too careful here. Uh, I know, uh, I don't know if you already said this, uh, but this game is available on phones and tablets now, where it was originally yeah. just for PC, so that's cool. Well, and that's also kind of exciting, you know, like, I I've been a big fan of some, like, tower defense games. Mm -hmm. oh, let's see. No, no, no! Oh, you need to get, you need to stay need to in, in that, that hole. that thing. Okay, yeah. Got okay. it. Got it. So I need to, I need Go to get, to like, home. a little teeny piece that's going to stay in there. Yep. But and you need to keep teeny piece from going out. Come on. Get it. Nope, nope, nope. I messed it up. I think you can do it. Just ooze right in there. There you go. And ooze it in. There you go. There we go. So I need to then. There you go. You're build in. All that up. I feel real good about it. So that guy. Yep. 
That guy, I'm sorry, you're the sacrificial lamb Blob. of this. Yay! Yay! Get it, squeeze out! Woo! <laughs> yeah! I feel very well accomplished done, about that move. Sir. Well that, done. That felt really good. No, I like this. This is what's exciting is watching some of these games that transfer really well to like a touchscreen experience um, because of. Ooh, how do I do that? Uh, oh, keep it skinny. Use looks, the other click. That looks hard. Keep it skinny. Okay. Uh, but I want to. Maybe, yeah, can you? Oh, no! no! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> keep it, what if you can keep it attached? So just like, yeah, scooch it like as far as you can. There you go. <laughs> Squeeze it out the top a little bit more. All I can think about is colons and poop with this game. I don't know why. <laughs> is it, am I right or am I right though? Look okay, so I'm sorry. <laughs> We're gonna take a brief, a brief pause right there because I was, I don't know why in my brain I thought you were going to say all I could think about is like toothpaste. Oh. But you went to the other. I went to you went to the other end of the biology. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. Oh, oh, dang it! So close. Okay, let's. So funny. I just heard Newegg West say something about categories. You know what? Let's say toothpaste. I feel like, I feel like Newegg will like that analogy. <laughs> as, as brought to you by Colgate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on, come on, come on, get in there. I'm no. Sorry, it's still poop. Okay, <laughs> moving forward. All right, let me see if I can kind of get some that? speed run got action nice. there. So yeah, oh, I, you're I, gonna speed run it. I oh, have not the lava. I have no idea. Not the lava. Your friends are dying. Well, I just want to get that one at the top. No, don't go down. Don't go down. No, Ugh. no. Whatever. Just sacrifice them. Keep moving. <laughs> Do the thing. Win the day. Uh, Do the so stuff. Not that way, yes, that way. Let oh, checkpoint, yay. Man, this is starting to get kind of intense. Right? Okay, now there's a lava drip. And you can be uh, a completionist and try to go for the little plants there on the side. No. Oh, so sad. Ah. So sad. All right, hand it over. To... Okay. You and died my turn. There you go. You know, it's funny. They were like, you know, it, it's kind of hard to die in this game. So maybe every time you guys reach a checkpoint, you should switch off. But we've managed to make it work with death. Yeah, yeah the death thing. Yeah. Apparently, we found a way. <laughs> Life finds a way. No, 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 no. Um, okay, well, I got one of the things. I would like to, but then how do you get across from here? So you, you, gotta, you gotta make the jump. You just gotta, like, ready, okay, go. Okay, going. Nope, not going. Dying. Go, go, go. Push it. This is gonna be and so push sad. it. Oh, nope. oh, no, get behind, so get behind it, get behind it, get behind it. So sad. No, you just, no, you killed it. You, you, oh. made, you made the jump. Oh, what are you, what but, are you doing? Because look, oh, because you don't think we're supposed to go down no, here. No, you're supposed to go Duh. down that way. Okay, I thought we had to fall down. Ah, see, this is, this is how you, okay, now, now eliminate everything. Ah, there you go. Excellent, we're in. okay. We're in. Okay. Nah. What's that noise? Because we gotta, I think we gotta hit that okay, switch. Okay, I got that and thing. And then a, a part of you, so I think if you come off that switch though, Okay. So now get. Oh no. See, get, get to the elevator. Okay. But but you got to get something over on. here. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Now you got it. Now you're now you're cooking with napalm. There we go. Excellent. Love it. Love but it. But nothing's happening. And now you've got to get off the switch. Oh, got it. So eliminate that. Good yeah. Go. There you go. Did you get this far? Teamwork. Oh no. I, this really? is actually this is no. This is picking back up from where I started the demo. So it it, re, it restored us from my my first checkpoint. Oh, I but I can I can totally see why Newegg Ninja Leo had problems with this because he uses that trackball all the time. Go, 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 and that's go. obviously. I'm dead! I'm dead! Go go go! Get up there! No! no! All right, your turn. Sizzle. I burned us. We're dead. All right, so let's see. Yeah, I could definitely see myself wasting a lot of time, burning a lot of time on this. Go. Faster, faster! You can do it. Do the thing. No. Oh, Dang it. Oh. And I'm just going to do Terminator 2 here. Yeah, right, let me try one more time. OK. And then, then we'll trade You off. got it. Ready, go. Get it, 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 get it. Get it. Get... Faster, faster. That's the key for this part. You got to be fast. Come on, speed run one. No, I almost had it. Oh, you totally no. got it. I'm so sorry. OK. All you, right, no, Juan, third time's a charm. Third time's a charm, you okay, okay, have okay, the okay, okay. Strategy. You got the touch. Is that the you Transformers? 
movie? <laughs> no, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have it. I don't have it. I don't have you it. You can't go back. Just go. Just go. No, no, no that's, that, I, I'm too far gone already. You didn't believe in yourself. I, I was too, I was too busy trying to think up a Rodimus Prime joke. <laughs> uh, you, 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 you got All us right. this far. I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna pass. Let's try. Let's I'm gonna try. pass the buck. Uh, the go, buck stops go, at Trish. Go, 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 faster, faster, faster. And as I say faster, I'm like going slow as molasses. What is wrong stay with me? Stay on target, stay on target. See? No! Oh, I, that Trish. was real dumb. Oh wait, but here, boop. Oh. oh, there's a second one. Oh Lord. Get to the fancy place. Get, nope. Nope, all right. Well, I, I think that's probably a, a good stopping that point. That is a good stopping us point. Because we're literally stopped on this point and they're letting us know we're out of time for today's yes. show. Uh, so, guys, all the deals on Newegg.com slash Newegg now will be live through the end of the day or while supplies last. We are going to sign off, but the deals are still there. So you yes. can go get those deals right now and again throughout the end of the day while supplies last. Check out all those components and don't forget to recycle anything that you're getting rid of and, and wipe your hard drive. And help your family and friends do the same. And definitely check out those deals before I go and buy up everything. Because apparently that's what my wallet is doing today. Okay. I want to thank everyone for watching. Again, major shout out, huge thanks to the New Egg Ninjas, yes. the New Egg team here, making us look good, getting your show up and running every week. Mm -hmm. uh, thumbs up to Asus and Sims Recycling Solutions for letting us use their videos yes. for this week's show. Thank you. And check back next week. We'll be talking about tech for dads. Yeah. Just in time for Father's Day. Just in time. You still have time to buy things for Father's Day. It's true. All right, guys. This has been New Egg Now, and now you know. Bam. Bye.